welcome back. Um, maybe a new kind of video, maybe just a new collection. Working on stuff. Uh, on the record player is Horror Movie Teams, Geoff Love and his orchestra. Just a uh, compilation with some cool tracks, love the cover, that I picked up, I don't know where. Flea Market, I guess. Uh, was out for the Halloween party. But it starts off with a lot of crying, so I uh, skipped it. <laughs> Okay, so, mm, I don't know, about six records, um, yeah, from the record store that is life, I guess, that was a work title. Records that friends got me, uh, orders, stuff that came in, just, I don't know, with some stories behind them. Okay, here we go. Uh, Ceremony in the Spirit World now on Relapse Records. Uh, Ceremony, for those who don't know, a started out as a hardcore punk band in the... For me, second wave of hardcore for most, if you did all the waves, maybe the third wave. Um, yeah, they do, they had quite the evolution. Now they're playing, I would call it a bit post-punk-ish maybe, but in their own way. Every record was a progression, not leaving or not working up to this because they had a lot of highlights. For me, personal, the highlight was um, Roner Park because that was the most complete sounds, um, so they went a bit more post-punk, this is a bit more, yeah, post-punk, but with some, I don't know, I would say, yeah, some more dancier or groovier stuff, like, into turnstile territory, but a little less groove, it is more punk than hardcore. So yeah, uh, on Relapse now, they have been on Triple B, they have been on, I don't know, a lot of labels, but now it's Relapse, and this is the, um, Let's see. Deep purple and sea blue half and half with splatter edition, limited to thousand copies. So there you go. This is the printed inner sleeve that completes the cutouts, like so or so. Nice color. The limited edition had a Rubik's cube, I think, with a lot of these off base colors. This is the pressing, quite nice actually. One of the most colorful and perfectly in line with. Yeah, with the artwork. Um, I love a few tracks, Turn Away the Bad Thing in the Spirit World now are the two that I like most, if you would like to hear. It's been a long time since we did a download code. Enjoy. Um, yeah, I love the two first tracks because that was that, those were the singles that were pushed forward. Um, maybe I heard those the most and they still sound good, so yeah, I don't know. It is another ceremony and it's takes time to realize it's not Lauren Park anymore, I guess. But yeah, in Spirit World now, Relapse. Great record. Another great record by them. Then Ball. Um, what's it called? I think just Ball. Yes. I, not pre I'm pretty sure it's an American um, one-man project. I'm really not sure. Uh, I picked this up because my buddy uh, Han had this record and I was not blown away by it, but this is a very, very fun record. Um, ordered it to Drift Discogs from Human Heads, I think, in New York. Came in perfect condition, like they told, but uh, they forgot to mention the poster was not with it. Yeah. I'm not going to crack the gatefold because the inside, believe it or not, has uh, some erotic parts, um, but yeah, you'll have to do with this thing. Uh, yeah. In intensely disturbed, dirty, smut peddling slime, hard rock psych madness from the deepest cesspool of humanity. Fucked up subhuman fuzz guitars, depraved screaming vocals, gut rumbling bass, and caveman drum. A nightmare of revolting sounds. Ball is hard rock from hell. So, yeah, there you go. I love it, man. It's, it's just buzz 70s dirty. I was born horny. I guess that's true. So, yeah. Nice dirty treat for records. Um, and yeah, like I said, I heard it at Tom's place. I, um, when he was here, we played it again and I immediately picked it up the day after. Too bad the post was not here. It had more reproductive ports. Then, two records from I, I Could Cheat and call it uh, Desert Fest. We went to last or two weeks ago. I saw Volmas played an excellent set. Um, Wolvenest, I saw a few things, and then um, what's the 
What are those guys called again? Big business. Great man. Without the Melvins this time. I met up with Anakin Ships. Uh, she has been around in these videos, not in the flesh, but in spirit. Uh, and she had a record for me for some time. Uh, this is the uh, La Vida is un Mus Nosferatu uh, record that she had for me from the show, and it's called Solution A. Uh, yeah, blistering punk, fast barred vocals, a bit higher pitched than, uh, yeah, that, which makes it a little bit less stompy and a bit more sharp. But uh, yeah, really good record, and apparently they killed it live. Don't know if that is part of the artwork or just a kind of cigarette burn, but it looks. I don't know. Feels weird. Maybe a paper mistake makes it cooler. This is the black version. There we go. Band from America with some Japanese influences. But like I said, a lot sharper in execution. So yeah, I like it. Thank you very much. And we'll see each other soon at the Ikehim show. Not Grim, but Ikehim. So that was the first one from Desert Fest. Um, didn't pick up anything. I. Um, wasn't shopping around, but Space Force Records was there uh, with their distro, and they had something that my eye fell on. He is a he is a good guy, but I don't know his prices sometimes are yeah are ridiculously high. I would say Discogs prices, um, and I don't mind paying those prices if the records is in mint condition. I was a bit inebriated by the end, so I he asked forty five for this. Um, which is the Two Hunters Wolf in the Throne Room 2008 180 grams double vinyl. Nothing wrong with that, I was looking for it for a while. It's not a grail, it's just something I always had on CD but never had on vinyl and especially not this one, the one I was looking for. Nicely done, embossed with the gold foil. It has two print sleeves, heavy duty it is. Southern War 2008, so they were quality back then. This is the vinyl, just black with those fiery, candly, naturey center labels. Yeah, a really good record in my opinion. One of their, I don't know, best. It's the record I got to know them by? Question mark. I'm not sure, but they, um, yeah, they played some role in my, in me finding the stuff I'm into now. So yeah. Especially this. What I forgot to say and why I ranted over the guy. It was totally cracked and that's not from mailing. I picked it up from out of his bin, so yeah. Not cool man. Not cool. What is cool is a distro I discovered of which I forget the name and I'm not sure if he wants his name out. I'll ask him if he does. Um, yeah, I'll put a link in it and it's worth checking out. now. Me saying that and not giving out a shit is kind of shitty, so... Yeah, I picked up um, through a bend in the story, I picked up some Skull stuff from him. Uh, but uh, just one record and then some other things just to make it work for both of us, because it is in Denmark that he is located. So shipping-wise, whatever. Uh, the Cat next move. Uh, I am going to blank on the title because it is literally in ruins, but is the 2008 release I think it's last full length, um, it's two tracks, so let's call it full length. Um, it is the something too, but I'm not sure if it's the Sforta del Torno, Parolo, whatever. Um, so yeah, it's just another good baguette next to Sleeve wise, it's total shit, so it's just front and back with that icy white. But uh, it's one I've been meaning to pick up since it's yeah two newer tracks from it. I don't have too much. From this project because as you know it's quite expensive. Now it all got repressed but just haven't gotten around to. There's literally that, there's nothing more, no inserts, no nothing. Uh, ancient Records, uh, Sorted Altus, maybe his main projects, I'm not sure how he feels about it but yeah, the cat makes him a very very fucking good. Then two more. This was one one of those last year was full length and seven inch year, if you remember, with uh, the Varjelf, and there were a ton others that I can remember now. I bought this full length last year, but I didn't pick up the seven inch just because. And this is a uh, Mush Mahu with formulas of raw meat. Can you hear the shark approaching? So yeah, Mush Mahu. 
I think that's how you pronounce it. Formulas of rotten dead, so there's two sides on this seven inch side rotten and side dead. And what this is, is Svarta Dautus from Ancient Records again, who does his, who finally does a death metal project instead of the seven billion black metal bands he has. I'm pretty sure there's one more uh, deviation in there, but whatever. Uh, Formulas of Rotten Dead and Apocalyptic Brigade of Forbidden Realms. So yeah. This is low-key, not low-key, but I'm not sure how many people are really digging this. I guess a lot because I saw it re-up on Expansion Abyss, I think, but uh, Iron Bonnet still has this one. This is top-notch. And like someone commented on this post on Instagram, uh, when the drums kick in. It is insane. Even more insane is that if that's the drum, I'm not sure how it does it. So yeah, a pretty cool precursor to the full length uh, that Iron Bonnet did. I think maybe this year even. So, end of the year material maybe. And then, let's see how we are doing on time. Very sorry. This one, uh, Sat Krahe, I think, Sat Krahe. This is a demo compilation that's killed it. Uh, now, normally after this one, would the backline uh, compilation on Skilt would follow, but um, I didn't get this through Skill. Uh, Skill directly, I got it from the distro, like I said, because I don't know, something happened and um, the guy decided to not sell directly anymore, but just everything to the website. And I, I can't follow. I mean, it goes up, it's gone, uh, I can't follow. So it was always nice from him. Thank you very much for all those fun times we had. Um, no, for everything, for the trust. But uh, what I believe kind of went wrong is that something like people selling the friends and family editions on um, Discogs. How? Unless he does it. Why is that on Discogs? So maybe, I don't know. I understand why he's not doing it. Anyway. Sat uh, I think that's how you call it. With a Le Memoir d'un Corbeau Mort. I'm not sure what that is, but this is a demo compilation. Uh, like I said, that came out on Skill, where a lot of work went into, it. not, I don't know, printing-wise or pressing-wise, but uh, this is Skill 18, so this has been in the discography or missing in the discography for some time. Um, French bands, I'm not sure when they started, but um, yeah, they have a lot of shit, and then in 2008 it became Salfre, a uh, band that yeah, that did not sit still, that has a very accomplished list of records of their own. But yeah, this is the demo compilation of the previous band. Uh, French, it starts off very slow. I almost thought it was going to be dirgy or funeral-like, but then it kicks in and it is, yeah. I never heard of it. I heard of Salfre, I never went back. Um, I have, I'm going to have a problem looking into it every time again, but uh, yeah. This is a good place to start. Love this picture over here. And it says, All created and recorded by Don Cold Skull, picture by Rock 2005. So there you go. Um, tracks 1 and 3 are taken from the MyTune demo. Tracks 4 to 6 are Portrait Ouvert uh, in 2005. And then 7 to 10 are L'Arbre Mort, full length recorded in April, May 2005. So yeah, that's very cool. This is the first part of a double vinyls tetralogy, so two more. That would be fucking amazing. Uh, so once again, he kills it with another unearthed release. Um, the center labels are basically all this moon character. Um, but yeah, very, very enjoyable record that is going to stay in every rota rotation for some time. Um, yeah. Once again, man, thank you for all those records you sent me. Um, I hope I find some tan tan shit for you soon. I think I have the next one as so. well. Check it out if you still can find it. I'm not sure if it's available. I'll ask for the distro if he wants to go nuts. Um, yeah, that's about it. Record's almost done. I'm done. So I'll guess a update collection-wise will follow. Bye.